purposes. Commissioner Waddington will offer an invocation. God, our Father, as we gather for this meeting this evening, give us the guidance and wisdom to make the proper decisions. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Waddington, but it looks a lot like Warren Buffett. <laughs> Please call the roll. Mr. Waddington? Here. Ms. Fine? Here. Ms. Lloyd? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Mr. Brady? Here. Mr. Poole? Here. Mr. Lockhart? Here. Mr. you have before you the minutes of our meeting of November 26th. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move that we accept the minutes of the November 26th meeting and dispense with the formal reading. Second. Got a motion, second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion be approved. Hearing no objection, the motion is approved. We can have audience participation. Anyone have any comments regarding uh, our vote for the short agenda? Um, please have your microphone, give us your name and address, and share with your thoughts. Not seeing a general exodus to the microphone, uh, we will move on to a presentation that um, our Snowden Transit Administrator, Nicole DeFreitas, is going to <coughs> make and give us an update on what's going on with that great program. Here. Ready? Go. Start. <coughs> All right, so I want to thank uh, the commission for having me. I know Commissioner Poole's been very excited and waiting for me to get up here. So. <laughs> uh, before I get started, I want to introduce uh, Mr. David Jones. He's our general manager over with First Transit, who is our transportation partner. So thank you, David, for coming, and thank you for uh, all your help. And uh, we've kind of been a, a good team. He started a few weeks before I did, so uh, it's been a, a good partnership for us. So thank you. So before we get started, um, I know a lot of times we can get bogged down in budgets and subsidies and all these different things when it comes to transit. But when we get down to it, this transit's the one thing or one of the things that directly impacts our residents' lives. So I just wanted to show a quick kind of video, just some of our residents talking about how important transit is to them. Does the Sandusky Transit System mean to you? Talon Floor helped me with this so he can hear him. Talent's not the best camera operator. This one's a little blurry, <laughs> but the message is great. Yes, um, I reached out to Sandusky Transit System because our students uh, could not get to school. As you know, here at SDA, the students are not bused here. So we were looking for an alternative way to get them to us and get them to work. So I reached out to Nicole. Nicole was great about getting us the passes. Uh, the kids use, utilize the passes in two, two ways. They utilize them live for school, and they utilize them too for work, which work is part of the school, um, part of our program. The students have to 
be in a CBO type program, which is career based opportunities. So that worked out great for us. And Nicole was great about getting us the passes. Uh, we, we, we give them to students who are in need of them. We just don't turn them out, so there has to be a need. And it's been working out fantastic. Awesome. So what does the Sandusky Transit system mean to you or the students? <laughs> to the students, it's a way to come to school. Without it, they wouldn't be here. Um, we've had some that have been truant. And I said, what do you need? They said, well, I can't get there, especially when it's cold or rainy or snowing or 20 below. So I said, well, the transit pass helps. And they always tell me, oh, yeah, it would. And I give them a transit pass. Their attendance improves, which, of course, is helping them earn credits and graduate. So it is, is, does the transit become more important around this time of the year? Than oh, around right? this time of year, absolutely. It, it does become super important to the students this time of year. And we have kids that live quite a ways away from us. So that really does get them here, and it's also got to the parents because the parents call me and they say, I don't know what I'm going to do, I can't get them there. So off the transit is really popular. How would your life or the students' lives be different if there was no SPS? Um, if there was no SPS, I think our students would be coming to school some of them wouldn't. Um, they would have to go ahead and ride or walk or, you know, it's, it's even got to put her staff as much as yeah, some of them are so far away. So without this, they, they wouldn't be at school, they would graduate, they wouldn't help the community in any way. I just think it's just been gotten for our kids. I think really without Sylvester Transit, I don't know where it's going to be because a lot of them, and I would say we probably have a good 25 students who utilize the transit daily. So without that, they, they want to be coming to school. All right. Thank you. Thank you okay, so what does what Sylvester does Transit mean to you? Sylvester Transit means a lot because without it, I would start walking everywhere. I think it's a great way to travel. I mean, if people are friendly, I know some of them personally, I can, I can name some of you like the drivers, but uh, the good people and uh, my friend that Nicole and she's really nice. And it helps out because without it, obviously. Yeah, yeah um, I used to adjust the transit as my means of transportation, as my main means, because uh, I don't drive, obviously, but um, I go to my appointments, Erie County Health Department, like I'm going to an appointment today. And I'm probably taking the bus and I get to the mall and my semester down and transit basically every road. <coughs> How would your life be different if there was no STS? Oh wow. Uh I'd be biking everywhere. <laughs> I'd probably be biking everywhere. I love to walk. You know, from New York City to Hanbury, but I like to walk. But um in the cold it'll be hard in the winter time this time of year. So um, basically I don't ask people for rides, you know, but I feel kind of bad knowing that, you know, I'm independent, you know. Do you use the system more in the winter when it's cold like this? Yes, usually <coughs> because during Cedar Point's off season, because I see the point during operating days, uh, so during off season I definitely use it a lot because um, I'm, I'm home a lot and I have to go to point things and both it's like a season of work and things like that. But so, those things in the state world, I definitely need it. Any other uh, final thoughts about the Sandusky Transit moving forward? I love them. I love them. I think it's. Uh, Great. But being a small city like this and to have public transportation like this really is helping. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And I hear stories like this every day, and I think that was one of the biggest things that I learned from taking this position is how needed public transportation is. And many times it's life or death. I mean, people getting to dialysis and different things. So, um, you know, I'm proud to be able to, to represent the system and, and try to make it better. So. Um, moving on to that, we can kind of get into where we're at with things. So ridership numbers, January through November 2018, as you can see our fixed routes, we've had 82,332 passengers. And Dial-A-Ride, we've had 47,292 passengers, and you can see the mileage that both the uh, options have traveled so far this year, and we still have December to add into that. So we're definitely covering some territory and moving some people around. Um, and I wanted to look at last year versus this year. Um, so in October, the blue is 17. You can see we travel or carried um, 5,142 passengers. In 18, we increased that to 8,788, which was a 70% increase um, for the fixed routes. And again, for November, we also saw a huge increase, 42%, with 5,200 50, versus uh, 74. 100 passengers, so very pleased with those numbers for sure. 
Um, and we also saw not as great of an increase on the dial ride, but some of that contributes to many of those rides are based on contracts. So those, but we're still seeing a, an increase, which is better than, uh, you know, going the opposite way. So you can see October versus November on those numbers too. And we had a 3.6% and a 4.6% increase over the two months there. So um, definitely, definitely happy with that. So what changed? Why are we seeing these big increases on these numbers? First, we did rebranding. So before there was Spark and some different things and it was confusing for people. Um, so now we're just Sandusky Transit System and underneath that we have the fixed routes and we have the dial ride option. And then we have a new logo that you guys have probably seen on the, the buses running around town. We also <clears throat> changed some routes and redid our brochures. So you can see the new rider map there. We got Greg and Talon on the front cover as my co cover models and kind of made it a little bit more user friendly by adding stop or numbers to the stops and color coding and different things. And the response has just been tremendous from the, the changes that we've implemented. People can actually figure out how to use the system, which was one of the problems why people weren't riding it. Uh, we added the downtown transit hub. So on August 1st, we kicked off, off that. And so at the top of each hour, starting at 6 a.m., all four of the fixed routes meet up at the downtown hub there. <coughs> so people know if they can get there, they can hop on any of the routes to get around town. Or if they get there, they can transfer to get to different areas. Um, we moved the shelter there that you see from... Buchanan Street, which was sitting there not being used because the route didn't go there any longer. So we, um, the city crews were good and got that moved into place pretty quickly. We added new signage, new trash cans, a bike rack, and some additional seating there. So that people loved the changes and it's definitely a lot easier for them to, to, use, to use it um, knowing that everything's based out of there. And we updated amenities in eight different locations around the, the city um, with some benches, additional bike racks, and trash cans. And those are some of the locations where you've probably seen those around the blue um, stuff that's been there. We've changed the signage. So on our fixed routes, we've had where the purple line is. Those have been added depending what color the bus is, those are magnets. Um, the buses rotate out, so we're not putting too many mileage on just one bus, so there's a magnet we can put on the buses so people know what bus to get on. It's something very simple, but makes a huge difference. Um, we've changed the signage at the bus stops and then also added the color-coded toppers so people know what time the buses will be at those stops and also what the bus number is. So if resident, or visitors are in the area and they know that they're supposed to get off at red 14, they can see from the bus, okay, this is red 14 because they may not know where they're at. Um, and then it cor correlates with the rider guide so they can see that. Um, we've increased the public relations that we've done. So just a few things that I've been out doing. We did the Wooly Bear Festival we, uh, parade. We walked that up there. My daughter Ava played the guitar the entire route, wheels on the bus. <laughs> David was with us and some of his crew. Um, I've spoke at Harbor View Apartments, Viewpoint Apartments. We were at the Hancock Block Party. I've given tours to Representative Arndt, staff of Marcy Captor's office. Met with Genesis House, which is a recovery center in Vermilion. Work closely with the Vermilion Community Services that do fundraising to uh, contribute to Sandusky Transit. We are at Tondra's Fall Youth Summit, and we offered Election Day and Veteran Day free rides. Um, just trying to encourage people to get out to the polls and to honor our veterans. And we also, you know, try to have some fun. So we, Greg Volts in the office and I, decorated a bus one night and it was a spooky Halloween bus so people didn't know what they were going to be getting on but we had it all decked out inside. We have the buses decorated for the holidays and on December 4th we had, it was Sandusky Transit's 26th birthday so we had a, a little birthday party and David brought us a cake over and um, so just tried to have fun with it and try to get people, you know, energized the bus drivers and because without them and without them having fun, you know, they're uh, they're everything. They're the ones out there with our, our passengers. So. Um, marketing. In the past, there hadn't been any marketing done. Uh, so we've created a Facebook and Twitter page. I recently um, 
started working with uh, Mix 1027. We're going to be running some commercials and doing some uh, like community outreach like segments with them. We've advertised in Serving Our Seniors magazine, uh, brochures throughout the community. I have boxes in my car, and when I'm anywhere, gas stations, whatever, I'm dropping <laughs> piles of brochures. Um, I had tote bags made that we gave to OGO that they use for their free food giveaways because it's uh, you know synergy with their population that they serve. And we recently went into a temporary contract with Mark Advertising to redo some of the bus advertising, and then eventually we'll be doing a RFP to get a full-time um, partner on board with that. But you'll start seeing right now the buses have been kind of naked, so we will be getting new um, advertising on them, hopefully in the next week or so. And, uh, and we also identified that there's a lot of inside bus marketing opportunities that have never been utilized before, so we'll be looking into that. Uh, new partnerships and contracts. So these are just some of the, the contracts that we either renewed or went in or started working with new. Um, the one I'm excited with is not so much a contract, but a partnership with Kalahari. So they buy, I created like a, a um, business partnership program. And if they buy bulk monthly unlimited passes from us, they get a discount. So they're buying about 150 at a time. Um, and they are giving them to their employees because they've identified a huge problem with employees being able to get to work. So they're calling me every couple weeks for another 150, and it's been fantastic. I mean, we've, we've generated a lot of additional revenue from that. So I'm uh, grateful for Kalahari with their partnership. And the big thing I'm most excited about is that we recently got confirmation that we will be taking over the employee transportation for Cedar Point starting in January, so they will no longer be running their bus routes um, out to the mall and all those different locations. They'll be contracting with us, and obviously I'll be bringing that to, to commission, but um, so they'll be contracting with us to do all that. The employees will show their passes and will ride free, and that was a $150,000 uh, partnership that we agreed to, So, and I was able to use that as match dollars for the 5311 grant that I applied for. So very excited and happy that they liked the proposal and uh, saw that there was, you know, it's kind of silly. We were both running same routes, so it makes sense for us to take that over. So with the additional revenue coming in, what's next? Um, with that money, we'll be adding Sunday service on the blue line only. Um, so the blue line is the one that runs out 250 out to Kalahari and loops back around. Um, and we'll also be adding a seasonal express line, which will service Sports Force, Castaway Bay, Cedar Point dorms in downtown and running a continual um, loop just during the summer. So people staying in hotels, Cedar Point workers, um, you know, will be able to use that. So the workers obviously will be part of that that um, partnership with Cedar Point, but it'll be a chance for additional revenue from the general public that need to ride that. And Google Maps, this should be launching in probably the next two weeks, um, but we'll have all the routes on Google Maps so people can just go on their phones, say this example here is, I wanna go to Kroger's, or I'm at Kroger's and I wanna go to City Hall. So they'll type all that in and it'll pop up the routes, what times are leaving, how to do the transfers, um, this is especially important with the international students that we have in our area and just all the visitors so that they know how to get around and it's just going to be super convenient and I'm really excited uh, to get this. And it'll be linking up with the Amtrak routes and Greyhound and making it all um, very cohesive. So hopefully uh, by the end of the year we'll have that all up and loaded. And that's what I have. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> Well, I can't tell you how Bad impressed I am. Uh, you've you've taken, you know, you've taken something that this uh, city uh, and, and this commission have struggled at times to keep running because of the deficits, um, but which we've always found to be uh, important enough to to fund, and it is terribly important as you pointed out at the uh, at the beginning of your comments. But you've supercharged what we've been doing. I mean, here, here in a here in a, a good economy, uh, you um, a relatively good economy. You're still seeing increases in ridership. That's a testament to what we're doing right. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And the ability to partner with Cedar Point uh, is a testament to the stability of the system. 
Um, I, I, I do note that uh, um, County Commissioner elect Steve Schaffner is with us and I'm really grateful for your being here and we look forward to partnering uh, with the county um, as additional opportunities present themselves in ways to uh, keep the Sineski Transit system running and to keep it strong. It is something that uh, although it does bear the Sineski name serves the entire county and we're, we're proud to support that but we're always looking for additional ways to continue to expand uh, our service and the stability of the system. So. Hats off to you, Mr. Freitas. You've, you. you've been doing a really great job. Uh, commissioners, questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Mr. Lockhart. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Freitas for coming in and doing this. I know I requested a few weeks ago, and I really think you did a great job with it. Uh, overall, from where we were and where we are, excellent uh, start to where we are definitely going. Um, going forward, um, uh, just a couple of things that maybe you could uh, check out okay. an analysis on actually who our writers are and where they are. You know, that would be good uh, to know. The marketing is excellent. Thank you. That you really got a foothold into that. And then the dial -a ride the fact that the dial -a ride is up. It was once said that our dial -a ride was going down and we needed to kind of go away from that business. I personally saw that it was probably an opportunity for mm -hmm. us to do more business, which, you know, evidently you have. Um, and then with the shelters and benches, uh, shelters are obviously important this time of year. I've noticed on Venice Road in that area, and I can't remember what uh, what uh, designation that area has, but there's some elderly people that I've noticed standing at the bus stops with no shelter or benches. It would be nice if we could in, in the future get benches, if not shelters. I know shelters are difficult to come by, but benches at least a seat while they're out in the inclement weather. Yeah, and it's definitely something that we um, have uh, put into <coughs> our budget for next year is to look at that and see you know, how best we can leverage those dollars to get as many as possible um, benches and or shelters. Yeah. So. And I know that it's difficult with you know the mall location as the mall is not, you know, have, haven't figured out where we should be at or the Walmart situation either. But uh, as far as the CP uh, edition, that's excellent. Another kudos to you and staff. It's uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. But uh, one thing I'd like to know in the future is will that increase the time that we'll run? So, for instance, if the, you know, if the buses, if we're taking up the additional riders, will we run later into the evening? Will we run until midnight or 1 o'clock? Because I think that would be important, too, for people that are working late. So. Yeah, I mean, the goal is to keep increasing numbers, to increase the revenue, to be able to look to expand it as much as possible. So, you know, we're excited to be able to expand it for what we're doing right now. But, you know, my goal is to just keep it going. So. Yep. <laughs> but again, thank you and great success that you've had so far. Thank you. I appreciate it. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, Mr. it's redundant, but good job. Thank you. I, absolutely. <laughs> Really excited. I've always been up in supportive of the bus and um, to see the people that additional people riding, those folks are all, many of them are riding to jobs, which which is important to the community. So, yeah, and the Sunday service is going to help the residents greatly too because, you know, a lot of them are going to jobs out on 250 in different places. And we've, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I hear that where the need is at um, is, you know, to get to work and. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to help greatly. And I know, like, Kalahari is very excited that they're going to even be able to increase the number of passes that they're able to sell their, to their employees, which is just more revenue for us um, by having that Sunday service. So. It appears that you, Talon, and Greg are, uh, work well together. And yeah, have, we're the... <laughs> have, done good, have done some good things, gathering information, and, and obviously you've listened to the uh, riders because that, that's really what makes this work. I'm sure you, you, you've been responding to requests and... Folks done a good job gathering information and putting together the, the right things to grow the business. Thank yep, you. They're the ones that, that have the need, so we need to listen to sure. So thank you. Additional questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Freitas. Hey, uh, commissioners, we have our usual communications from staff recommending various pieces of, various pieces of legislation. Does someone care to make a motion to so accept those? Second. Second discussion. <coughs> Without objection, the motion to be approved. Carry no objection. The motion is approved. Ms. Cresser, would you present item number one? Yes, item one is an ordinance ratifying, accepting, and approving a collective bargaining agreement between the City of Sandusky and Ohio Charter Municipal Corporation and the Fraternal Order of Police, Ohio Labor Council Incorporated, the collective bargaining unit for certain employees of the Sandusky Police Department for the period January 1, 2019, December 31, 2021, 
a copy of which is attached to this ordinance, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Bonington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the release in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. It's been a motion. Second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Cool. Uh, congratulations to staff and department for coming together and putting this together as quickly as they did. It appears that, at least my, I would like to think that as rapidly as they came to an agreement on a schedule, that's because the, uh, they're satisfied and happy with the happy working here. It means that we've got decent relations with our police department, so good job. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Hayberger, you were able to handle this in-house, uh, and uh, you know we continue to uh, realize uh, substantial savings in our law department through the, uh, the the multiple abilities that you have, uh, and uh, look forward to um, continuing that path. Not only do we keep a, a, a closer control over our legal services, but we uh, make sure that uh, that costs those costs are are, are uh, kept down. I normally uh, do. I regret seeing not well, fewer lawyer fees get paid, but um, when we're doing the paying, I'm happy to see them reduced. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Ms. Cressy, would you pull the commission on the motion, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Now in the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Item number two, please. Item two is an ordinance amending ordinance number 18-211, passed on November 13, 2018. <coughs> Authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase 350,000 pounds more or less of ferrous chloride solution for use at the wastewater treatment plant during the calendar year 2019 and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Fine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. Then a motion and second. Discussion. Ms. Cresser, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Item number three, please. Item three is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase 112 24 inch and 48 28 inch lamps for the Trojan UV 4000 system at the wastewater treatment plant from Pelton Environmental Products Incorporated of Lewis Center, Ohio, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Mr. having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Poole. Move the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. Got a motion and second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brady. I bought a lot of light bulbs in my day, but boy, these are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had this discussion with uh, our engineer at noon today, and he assured me that the, how, we, how we kill bacteria with uh, this type of light bulb is still the state of the art. I was hopeful that we could move in the direction that we have at the water plant, which is doing it uh, with uh, with the carbon method, but he assures me that this is still the state of the art, so I guess we're just going to keep buying these expensive bulbs until something changes or something gets better, but still is uh, competitively good and there's still good numbers. And it's uh, only every three years we have to buy this, right? That's if right. I understood that correctly. So, and you know, it is expensive, but uh, we need to do um, our part not only because the EPA requires it, but also because uh, we're, be we're direct beneficiaries of the health of a healthy Lake Erie and the Dusty Bay, uh, both economically in terms of um, <coughs> that we bring, and then also um, the, the quality of life in this area. So it's important to do that. So, uh, additional questions or comments, Mr. Chairman? Cool. Just one. With regard to water quality, uh, there's no place for saving money. Period. That's. That's how I feel about it. It's we we have to have the highest quality water available, and uh, Flint was at the other end of the spectrum. I just assume that we stay where we are. 
Additional questions or comments? Mr. <coughs> Gressor, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. That ordinance has <coughs> been adopted. Item number four, please. Item four is an ordinance declaring that certain real property owned by the city located at 1215 Milan Road and identified as parcel number 57-01857.000 is no longer needed for any municipal purpose and authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an agreement to sell the designated real property to Michelle Williams and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Mr. is having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lloyd. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules and in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. It's been a motion to second. Discussion? So last go, this is then the tail end of what you had uh, promised us before. We bought this property at the front of J.C. Park. So we, we could open it up a little bit and, and, make, and provide for better signage so people to know that this gem of a park and it's going to be a gem when we get finished with it, uh, but it's a very large park. Uh, it's actually back there. Uh, it was fascinating. I, I forgot where that was. That maybe came up in a neighborhood meeting, Mr. Poole. Or I can't remember where I, where I saw that. But there was a neighbor uh, quite nearby that uh, didn't even know the park was there. It's been there for a couple of years. So, uh, so you had promised that what we would do is we'd buy this, and then we'd sell off the home and make actually a better yard for them, which we did. And so appreciate your, your efforts, and then we'll have a new homeowner in Stusky on top of all that, too. So that's a double win. Additional questions or comments? Mrs. Cresser, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Klein? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Commissioner President. That ordinance is adopted. I understand yep. the new Perfect. homeowner is with us in the back. Ms. Williams, would you uh, uh, care to say anything? We're, we're looking forward to having you as a new homeowner, and congratulations. I'm sorry, thank you. Good, great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here. <coughs> uh, Ms. Gresser, would you provide, uh, present item number five, please? Yes, item five is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a consulting contract with John A. Fike for calendar year 2019 and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. And a motion and second. Discussion. Sure. Mr. Brady. Uh, I, this item five, six, and seven are, are really, I think, are all tied together. Uh, I, I don't think that needs a lot of explanation. I've sat through these about four or five years now, where we are uh, we are setting aside dollars for these people to do plans examination. And you might wonder why you need three people. You need three people because in a small community like ours, you do have conflicts of interest. Uh, oftentimes, Mr. Fike is the architect and. Mr. Polis uh, ends up doing the plans examination, and oftentimes, if Mr. Polis is an architect on a project, we need a we need someone to examine plans <coughs> besides besides uh, Mr. Polis. So, I'm pleased we've got three people in it. It is my recollection. I, I don't think I'm wrong about this, Mr. Lasco. That I believe these numbers are going down, though. It, it seems like we used to set aside ten or twelve thousand dollars for plans examiners to do that. Uh, to the president, to Commissioner Brady, um, the. Contract amounts for Mr. Polis and Mr. Fike are identical as to what they were last year. Um, believe it or not, we've actually slightly upped the numbers only because our construction activity has increased tremendously. Um, just in looking at the permit revenue numbers today, we're actually up 30% from 2017, about a $90,000 gain in permit fee revenue. So we're starting to see that construction activity uptick. But to your point, uh, we did uh, bring in Mr. Stadler, who is new, uh, because of the increased construction activity and some of those conflicts that do arise with Mr. Polis and Mr. Fike. So uh, these expenses are more than covered and then some based on the increased permit uh, revenue activity over the last year. Good choices on all of them. Great problem to have. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Let's, uh, take a moment for uh, Mr. Fike and Mr. Polis have done this for us uh, for many, many years. 
And it's worth noting that, you know, that uh, work couldn't get done if someone did not do this. And I just think we want to take a moment to recognize their, uh, their commitment to the community and recognize with, that they have not, and it's important, they have not asked for more money. They're doing this for the same price that they did this for last year without a thing. And I just think that's noteworthy. Citizens should recognize that, that this community, uh, there, there are many people who live here who do things for us. Granted, they get paid for their work, but at the same time, it, uh, when you consider that for our projects to go forward, these folks both have, both these gentlemen have their own jobs, uh, which means when we call them, they have to make arrangements from what they're doing to uh, put our stuff on, to get our things done so that we can uh, continue to move forward. And citizens should recognize that there are people in the community that do go the extra mile for us and uh, that we appreciate it. Additional questions or comments? Mrs. Crestry, would you poll the commissioners on the motion, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Boyd? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. <coughs> that ordinance is adopted. Item number six, please. Item six is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a consulting contract with George J. Polis for calendar year 2019 and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. For the motion and second. Discussion. Mr. Cresser, would you poll the commissioners on the motion? <coughs> Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Now on the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Item number seven, please. Item seven is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a consulting contract with Robert G. Statler for calendar year 2019 <coughs> and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, have heard this communication. How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. And a motion and second. Discussion. Mrs. Cresser, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Ms. Murray? Yes. Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. That completes our regular agenda. And Mr. Wilpser, we turn the meeting over to you for your report now. Thank you, Commission President Murray, commissioners, uh, audience, and staff. I will start with donations. Uh, first, a donation of $500 of a $500 Kroger gift card was received from an anonymous donor to purchase gifts for children for Christmas. Community impact officers will buy toys and clothes and distribute to those in need. I'd ask for a motion to accept that donation. Second. Been a motion and second. Without objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. And we can't send our thanks to that anonymous donor, but uh, those are, are very special things that happen in this city all the time. Absolutely. Also, a donation of $200 received from an anonymous donor to spread cheer for the holidays. And Sineski Police will use the donation to continue helping children in need. And ask for a motion to approve that donation. So moved. Second. Been a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion to be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved again with our thanks. A $25 donation to the city's greenhouse was received from Trinity Uni Unity Methodist Church. And ask for a motion to accept that donation. So moved. Second. Then a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion to be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. With our thanks to the church. Great. And then finally, an in-kind donation of the book, Always Cedar Point, a memoir of the Midway by John Hildebrandt, who is a longtime uh, general manager at Cedar Point and also one of the really influential historic committee members of the Bicentennial Celebration. Uh, he's donated that for the time capsule to be included in the new city hall, and that's a $25 value. Dave Waddington donated. Dave Waddington. Oh, don't, sorry, Dave Waddington made the donation. I apologize. Uh, the book he signed of John Hildebrand's book. This is a, a written in. Uh, <laughs> this, no, it's okay. It got walked in. So um, I'd ask for a donation to accept Mr. Waddington's donation. 
Make a motion to accept the donation. Okay. Then a motion and second discussion. Without objection, the motion is approved. That's okay. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Well, thanks to Mr. Waddington. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to administration, the IT department will be working to issue an RFP competitive bid for new fiber internet access circuits and phone service in the near future. We're currently out of contract on our existing circuits, so we replace the existing and add a new one for City Hall. Uh, also, uh, I'm asking the commission for a motion to approve reappointing three members to the Bayfront Corridor Committee. Uh, each of these individuals will serve a three-year term that will expire on December 31st, 2021. The three reappointments are for David Miller, William Siemens, and Mike Zuloff. I'd ask for a motion to approve those recommendations. So moved. Second. Been a motion and second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Poole. Um, these uh, appointments are, are fine. I do have uh, concern about the appointments that uh, the folks that were removed from the committee. As a general rule, uh, having a, a, the reason you remove people should be something that we know about, number one. And number two, folks being removed for committees because possibly we think we don't care for what they say uh, at the committee meetings is, I think, is, is, is not a good process. The uh, ideas, good, bad, or indifferent, whether I agree with them or not, should be uh, should be part of our committee structure. Other than that, these three, I'm perfectly satisfied the only, keeping them on. The only point, Ms. Poole, that I would, uh, the only observation I would make is that this was part of an effort a oh, year, year and a half ago to... <coughs> Bring the boards and commissions into uniformity in terms of uh, having uh, staggered uh, and definite terms. Uh, the Bayfront Corridor had become kind of an, an, an oddity in the sense that people um, got on the committee and they never left, and there were tons and tons of people, so we had made a decision to limit the number of folks involved to make it into a kind of a more normal sized committee. And uh, I it was, I think it was an expected part of the legislation, as I understood it, that uh, there would be fewer appointments made and therefore the size of the committee would be reduced over time. All right. But your other observations are, are, of course, quite correct. Mr. Chairman, with regard to what you just said, we, we, we uh, agreed or suggested or discussed in whatever way you want to put it that we would reduce that committee through attrition, retirements, folks quitting as opposed to people being removed. And that that's the difference in this uh, in this case. Also, I believe the committee is uh, one short of the ten is at nine instead of ten now. So it's just it, without going any further. That's I think it's not a good a good place for us to be. Uh, understood, and uh, I I do think we are at ten though. I get through. I get really quickly. Same quickly. difference. The point is, we should be at, we could be at eleven or twelve or thirteen. Actually, we were reducing that committee by att through attrition. Through and that is and that is what was on our. Uh, in the minutes of our, our meeting. Ms. Wilson, yes. uh, through, through the commission president to commissioner pool, the way I, we do have 10 voting members, Kelly confirmed this morning, mm -hmm. uh, and the way that the legislation reads, it says that by January 2020, there should be no more than 10 community members who shall be nominated and appointed. Uh, this reduction will be accomplished by reappointment of only three community members after expiration of terms in 2017, reappointment of only three community members after expiration on December 31st, 2018, and reappointment of only four community members in December 2019. So it does explicitly state that we are to eliminate two last year, two this year, and then one next year, just to be clear. Uh, and so certainly the choices I had to make to eliminate two of those were difficult, but they weren't intentional. And, and they were not made because people disagreed with the city, but for, in fact, what were thought to be statements beyond disagreement. And, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Now, Mr. Chairman, I perhaps didn't read the fine print specifically in the legislation as it was, but I want to point out that the assignment of those three-year, two-year, and which ones were who was going to be expired first in the details was totally at the discretion of the folks in charge of the committee. 
So the very fact that, that an individual who represents a segment of the community that continuously has differences of opinion with the organization, uh, I would suggest that <clears throat> although it's, it, it's impossible to prove, it, it seems just kind of strange that the first person up to get thrown off is the most vocal person who also attends the most meetings. We've got folks on that committee that, turn, that attend one or two meetings a year. This gentleman attends Miss One this year. And so I accept the possibility, the, except for re perhaps reality, that you found a technical reason to pull that off. But I do not think, and I should just suggest to you that uh, you can't kill ideas. Simple as that. And doing away with your political enemies by administrative uh, moves is is just not good for a small community. I get that. In, I get that stuff in in, in Congress. Ms. Boyd, that's it. I would just like to point out that I think it's a good idea that we are changing some committee members up, bringing fresh ideas in continuously is a great idea. Also. These meetings are public, so anyone is welcome to come to these meetings and continue to give their input. So I'm not sure that this should be such a hot topic right now. Um, I've come to these meetings, and it's everyone has an opportunity to speak, and everyone has an opportunity to reach out to these committee members to talk to them and let them know what's important. So. I mean, I, I think we should welcome all residents and anyone that wants to be a part of our community to come to these open meetings and share their thoughts and like what they want to see. So I'm, I'm not sure that this should be such an intense issue right now. Okay, uh, I have a motion and second. Mrs. Crusher, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Waddington? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. That motion is approved. Mr. Wilkster, back to you. Commissioners, uh, as a reminder to transient rental owners, Erie County Commissioners amended the 4% hotel lodging tax regulation, and beginning January 1st, 2019, that regulation will include all establishments of hotels and rental homes that rent one or more rooms for less than 30 days. Uh, the city then piggybacked off of that with a 3% uh, municipal tax that will also be paid on rooms of one or more lot for less than 30 days. Uh, we wanted to let the community know that the county will be having a session on Wednesday, December 12th at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. to learn more about the county's, pro county's process for collecting those taxes and that I confirmed with Director Lasco today that we will be mailing out likely next week uh, guidance and forms to all of our registered transient rental owners uh, on how they will remit their taxes on the new tax to the city. But we just wanted to give people an advance warning that that new tax uh, does begin collecting on those rooms of one to five uh, starting in January of this year. Uh, also moving on to police department, the snow has already started in the community as we all know, and it's a reminder to all residents that emergency snow routes are designated throughout the city. If snowfall exceeds two inches on these streets, your vehicle should be moved to allow snow plows and emergency responders room to operate. If a snow ban goes into effect, your vehicles could be ticketed and towed. Uh, for the fire department, members of the fire department who participated in No Shave November will be allowed to continue through December 31st by donating to charity once a week and the department is requesting authorization to apply for and potentially receive a grant to offset the cost of fire safety consumables, such as coloring books, fire helmets, et cetera. We're also including in the grant request submission items for safety towns, such as pedal cars and stoplights. The grant will not exceed $24,999. The fire prevention and safety grants are part of the assistance to firefighters program and support projects that enhance the safety of the public and firefighters from fire and related hazards. The primary goal is to reduce injury <coughs> and death among high-risk popul populations. In 2005, Congress authorized funding for FPNS and expanded the eligible uses of funds to include firefighter safety research and development. I'd ask for a motion to allow the fire department to apply for that grant. So, so moved. Second. And a motion second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> uh, for finance, a general reminder for property owners of vacant dwellings. If your dwelling is expected to remain vacant and unoccupied during the winter months, we highly recommend that you contact our office to turn off the water. This will help prevent your water lines from freezing and breaking, which would lead to costly repairs for the property owner. The customer accounting office number is 419-627-5893. 
Also, sewer and water rates will increase with the January 2019 bill. Information regarding the annual rate increase through 2021 is available on the city's website. Moving on to public works. Uh, the groundbreaking for the Jackson Street Pier and Shoreline Drive plot projects will take place near the entrance to the Jackson Street Pier on Friday, December 21st at 1.30 p.m. A reception at City Hall will follow with hot chocolate, coffee, and cookies. We'd also like to welcome Logan Barton, who joined the Division of Streets and Traffic as a full-time maintenance, too. Logan previously worked as a seasonal employee in code enforcement. Also, because of the cost of road salt increased so dramatically for 2019, staff has stockpiled as much material as possible at the 2018 price. And due to the arrival of inclement weather and colder temperatures, we'd like to remind residents of a few precautionary steps to take to avoid frozen water lines inside and outside the house, including setting thermostats at 55 degrees minimum, insulating exposed pipes, and letting the cold water faucet trickle continuously during extreme cold weather. For community development, uh, Peter and Joan Neff are requesting a satisfaction of mortgage for their 2007 CDBG exterior rehabilitation loan in the amount of 6000 Mr. and Mrs. Neff are unable to afford the cost of their home located at 3328 West Monroe Street. Therefore, they're selling the property on short sale. The mortgage company has agreed to accept the short sale as long as the city's lien is satisfied and will be giving be forgiving between 5000 and 6000 of their funds as well. City staff is recommending approval of the satisfaction order to allow the short sale to take place so the property does not go into foreclosure. I'd ask for a motion to accept. So moved. Second. And motion, uh, motion, second, discussion. Uh, Mr. Haberger, the only question I had is, uh, I mean, I support this, but uh, for the reasons as stated, but uh, this, since given the amount, $6,000, is this something that requires commission approval or that is the, the staff just wants commission approval? I don't, I don't think it's something that would require it, but I think it's something that when we go back um, through the records, say, 10 years from now, it would be nice to see that commission, that we had commission approval and not just someone did it on their on their own. Okay. All right. Very good. Understood. Mr. Thor Mr. 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 Chairman, um, separate from that, before we're done, would you show me where staff gets to do that next week sometime, okay. where, you, where you came up with that? The concept of staff for giving loans just seems strange to me. I just didn't understand which way it was, so. Yeah. And, and you might be right. I don't know. I don't so, know. But, yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate I don't have a problem accepting this. I'm not sure, but okay. okay. But I need to say it next week. If you follow up the entire commission, Mr. Chamber, it would be appreciated. Additional questions or comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1524 Forest Drive, the city has completed its acquisition and subsequent sale to the Erie County Land Reutilization Corporation of this property. The ECLRC, or Land Bank, will soon commence asbestos survey activities on the property and will complete the demolition in the upcoming weeks. For the planning department, the regular planning commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, December 19th at 4.30 p.m. in the commission chambers. The regular Board of Zoning Appeals meeting will occur on Thursday, December 20th at 4.30 p.m. in the Commission Chambers, and the Landmarks Commission meeting is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, December 19th at 3.30 p.m., also in the Commission Chambers. That concludes my remarks for this evening. I'm happy to answer mm -hmm. any questions. Commissioners, questions or comments for the City Manager? Just a shout-out to uh, Jack Parshman, since you've mentioned it. Uh, he uh, has, for several years now, included a rather unusual clause in the, as, as, as folks no, here, and I'll just remind our listeners, uh, we buy salt through a cooperative purchasing program through the county, and Mr. Farshman takes uh, all of the total requests and adds those up, and then that's the amount of salt that we buy. We go out to bid, and we buy that salt. A lot, of, a lot of counties, a lot of smaller communities go through ODOT. I think we get a better deal going through the county. Um, but Mr. Farshman always includes a clause in there very, very important to us in years like this when there's been a huge spike in the prices, and that is that up until the end of the year, we can buy as much salt as we want at the old price. So um, Mr. Klein has taken advantage of that, and our, our streets department has taken advantage of that and stockpiled as much salt as we can, as, as have most of the other political subdivisions in Erie County that, that uh, buy their salt uh, uh, as part of that cooperative program. So that will save, I forgot how much that will save, I understand it's all $100,000, it saves the city, um, and a big deal. So, That's great. thanks, Mr. Farshman. Additional questions or comments for the city manager? And we turn to old business. Anyone have any items of old business? Um, sort of an, old, uh, an item of old business, and uh, 
Uh, I raised this just today with, with Mr. Whoopser and, um, uh, and really not given the chance of much of a, the staff much of a chance to respond. Uh, so we'll take this up uh, later on. But I did, did receive a call from a near West End resident, and the trains have become um, a problem uh, between, especially at Edgewater and uh, what is that, King Street. And uh, the railroad worked with us the last time. They don't have any mm -mm. obligation to work with us, legal obligation. We have no authority over the railroad. But I, I would ask if we could reach out again. We did something that worked the last time. I think, Chief Orzak, you were, you were um, part of that initiative. And, uh, um, and then I think as a body, I would like to uh, entertain the possibility of the commission sending a letter to our federal legislators uh, we talked about it before, but then we got some more immediate relief from the railroad. But you know, I, I think that um, local communities need to be heard on this, and it's not right that um, the federal government has complete authority over the railroads, um, but then they say it's a local problem when you contact them. Quite the right answer. So, follow up on that for staff. However, you want to follow up on that, I appreciate that. Other items of uh, old business, the items of new business. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I want to recognize our local firefighters for the great job they did on the fire on Hancock Street. It was a, it was a total burn through almost, uh, and a lot of firefighters were there. Mutual aid was there. Um, it just so happened that there weren't anybody off that day, and the fire department did an excellent job. And uh, I'm really, really, really super proud of them. Everybody in the house got out safe, and there were no firefighters harmed. And uh, it was like really, really awesome. So it kind of underscores the importance of uh, <coughs> firefighters, our fire department, and making sure that we're staffed at the proper level. So. Additional items of new business. Mr. Chairman. Waddington. I'd like to make a motion to have our city manager be off from December 22nd after our next commission meeting until January 2nd and give Mr. Brady a cell phone and Lock him out of here. He needs a break. <laughs> no, I looked at you Saturday. Yeah, you need a break. I'm being your friend. Did I get a second on that? Second. What was it? Would you repeat that motion? To stay out of City Hall from January 22nd until, or December 22nd until January 2nd. He needs a break. Mr. Brady, you talking about? No, I'm talking about our city manager. Brady needs a break, too. <laughs> It's probably an HR violation. Yeah. <laughs> an employee, when he can take vacation. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I think it was an expression of support, Mr. Oh, Wilson. Oh, this is, yeah. Are you taking vacation? Is that the concept? Through, through the commission president, I am, take, I am planning on taking a few days off over the holidays. Um, and I appreciate the sentiment about resting, but I just want to make sure that I will be allowed back in when I do come back. But <laughs> you, don't have to make a, you don't have to make a formal motion, though. I promise I will appropriately use vacation time and be well Can we rested take a roll call and, and look forward to coming back. <laughs> so, no, I'm serious. You need to I appreciate get away. You need to thank get you. away. Thank you. Days. Right. I can tell. Okay, right. And everyone. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. This year, what we've accomplished in 2018. Yeah, disappear for 10 days. And, and, and on both sides, and there are 245 yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. been an extraordinary year with extraordinary results. So. A lot of work. It's really been great. We need a motion or a... No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let it die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to squeeze you. Any other items of new business? Then we will turn to audience participation. Anyone wish to address the commission on any city-related matters, please step to the microphone, give us your name and address, and share with us your thoughts. No one rushed to the microphone. The chair will entertain a motion adjourned. Motion adjourned. Please stand adjourned.